Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to be covering authorization policy changes in .NET 8. Uh, this video is going to cover what was bad in .NET 7 about authorization policies, how you could war work around that issue, and uh, what are the new changes that make things easier. And the reason I'm including the workaround example is because uh, it just brings a little bit of clarity to how the whole thing works or what you can actually do with the ASP.NET Core framework. So uh, don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. And if you would like the source code, uh, come support me on Patreon. The link is in the description. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take a look at the current uh, solution. We have a very simple uh, program CS file. We're adding controllers. And maybe not to explain the whole setup, uh, just to explain what I'm trying to do. I may have endpoints or I may have a controller where I want to say, look, uh, you should have access to this endpoint or that endpoint based on this scope requirement or based on this condition. When I'm defining a new endpoint or when I'm defining, uh, you know, a new controller action, I don't want to go ahead and set up a new policy. I just want to slightly configure the rule. Okay. So in this case, I'm saying we should have a scope of under 18 and the scope of over 18 to access these actions. Okay. And a similar thing is happening over here. So if you're in .NET 7, in order to achieve this uh, dynamic requirement, what you'd effectively have to do is you would have to set up this, uh, what I refer to as a pile of heat, okay? Uh, so at the very top, you would uh, define your scope requirement. So when it comes time uh, to register your authorization, usually you would register your scope requirement over here. But because the scope, scope requirement would be handled by a scope requirement handler, uh, this requirement that you're registering over here would have to be configured globally for the whole application just at the service registration endpoint, not at a per endpoint definition. So in order to get this per endpoint definition of what kind of configuration you want for your authentication, you would have to go ahead and create an extension of the attribute. So scope requirement attribute where you now have to perform a little bit of magic, effectively converting stuff into the policy or like the value that you want. You would have to, I don't know, maybe if it's a complicated object, you'd have to JSON serialize it, though uh, attributes don't allow complex types. So anyway, you would supply a string here, you put it in this uh, uh, in the policy name, and then you register a, a policy provider. Uh, so the policy provider, based on the name, you would try to ex extract the scope name, and then that would add a dynamic requirement. So you're kind of always rebuilding this dynamic requirement uh, rather than having it statically registered over here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and quickly see the effect here. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. I have a test HTTP script right over here where we're going to go ahead and log in with under 18. I'm going to get the status 200 here. I think this is uh, this one. Let's go ahead, copy the access token uh, right over here. And we're going to go to the controller under. We should have OK here. If we're going to go to over, we're not going to be able to reach it. OK, so it's uh, working. We can also do the same with um, endpoint. Let's go ahead and run this. So not found uh, because I haven't spelled, uh, spelled endpoint correctly. Uh, there we have it, 403. And if we go under, uh, we are allowed. So this authorization attribute, so require a uh, scope requirement attribute that we're supplying over here. And by the way, just a little trivia, uh, deviating from the example, whenever you're saying uh, require authorization and then you're specifying a, a policy name over here, under the hood, what it's going to do is it's going to add this new authorization attribute and the authorization attribute is just this container which is going to hold the policy, okay? So the authorization attribute that you're registering over here in the end is going to be added as just an object to the metadata, okay? So uh, that is internally 
how effectively just an authorization attribute gets added to the metadata. It's kind of a convenience function. So this is the reason that it works. Uh, this is also an authorize attribute. Okay. So it just gets added to the metadata and that basically requires authorization for this endpoint. With the controllers, it just looks like, you know, <laughs> you're putting, putting an, an authorized attribute on there. Uh, and But you don't have your own convenience function here. So if you're wondering about how that works, uh, that's what you have. So anyway, uh, back to the example. The reason uh, this is so undesirable is because you have this policy provider that you have to authorize and now you have to do some kind of string matching to get your string. And it's just, you know, you, it's it doesn't feel like uh, you're using it properly. You have to do this some sort of dance with this uh, authorization policy provider. So uh, the current uh, project, I have gone ahead and copied it to the workaround. Uh, the setup is pretty much the same. Uh, there are a couple of things that are different here. We're now adding the HTTP context accessor uh, that we can, we're can we going to be able to use in our services. So the pile she is now services, okay? Uh, we have the scope requirement. We have our authorization attribute. We no longer have the policy provider where we have to do this crazy matching. Uh, we have the value that we're submitting over here and we are default setting the policy here, okay? So the policy that we're default setting is also the policy that we're statically registering over here with the scope requirement, okay? So at this point, we are still using the scope requirement with the same um, scope names. And by the way, in case you're wondering how I log in, I'm using this functionality over here where I just sign in with the token and the scope that I provide in the... Uh, query parameter, right? So I sign in with a particular scope. Uh, and it's the same for all three ap applications. Uh, so anyway, we have the endpoints. Again, we have the controllers over here. Uh, the main thing that's different about uh, this setup is instead of going to the handler, uh, to the what's called, to, to the policy provider, uh, what's happening is now that I'm registering the HTTP context accessor in my scope requirement handler, I'm capable of getting the information about which endpoint it is that I'm trying to reach. Okay, so once I know uh, the endpoint that I'm trying to reach, I can go ahead and try to get this metadata of this endpoint. Okay, so I would get the scope requirement attribute, which I am putting on my controllers and I am putting on my endpoints. OK, so I'm able to extract this particular data from the information of the HTTP context. And then I'm capable of saying, OK, do we actually have this scope? And I don't have to do any string parsing or anything like that, as I would have to do in this solution over here and keep constantly recreating uh, this uh, authorization policy. OK, so this is a workaround that you could have applied, however, now you're relying on the HTTP context accessor, which has its own drawbacks, but uh, this is the approach. So if you understand how to get information about the endpoints uh, in a context of, uh, you know, uh, when you're in, in an HTTP context, you are capable of producing this kind of solution, which alleviates, you know, uh, the uh, policy provider. What is the new solution? We're going to go to the new solution. The new solution is an exact copy of the current, and I was thinking, we just, you know, write it ourselves. So uh, what are the actual changes? Uh, and let me actually stop the application. So uh, the scope, scope requirement attribute is actually going to be the thing that is going to be holding the I authorization requirements as well. Okay, so we no longer need this scope requirement. And the value, well, it can actually just hold the value, we no longer need to set uh, the policy as well. Uh, another thing that we are going to need to inherit from is if I put this over here, this kind of looks awkward. Let me figure this out is I authorization requirement data. Okay. When we implement this interface, we're going to get something like this. We just yield return this instance. We're going to be holding the value for the scope that we're defining. And this is what's going to generate the requirement. Uh, the policy provider, we no longer need to use this, okay? And the authorization handler is going to operate on this scope requirement attribute, okay? Just like that. So replace both of the parameters, maybe throw these on new lines so everybody can see the full thing. So at this point, we're going to have the requirement. The scope has actually changed to value, okay? 
and that's it. So you no longer have to fiddle with the provider. When we go to program CS, notice that we're not uh, actually building up this policy uh, the same way that this would dynamically build up this policy. Okay, so this new approach alleviates the usage of this policy provider and all of the problems that come with it. The rest of the solution uh, looks exactly the same. You don't have to change your scope requirement attributes. Uh, let me close this current so I don't get mixed up. Uh, you don't have to do anything in the test controller. Uh, I'm actually going to do this a little bit of honor, right? Rename this to service because it's no longer a pile of shit and the rest should work exactly the same. So let's go ahead, uh, launch this up and give it a little whirl. So hopefully I did not remove this from different codes. So this is a new scope requirement provider cannot be found. I am not using it. Maybe perhaps I forgot to sell, uh, save the file. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and maybe the token actually just still works. So unauthorized, yep, uh, let's get a token. Gonna grab it here, paste it. Let's go ahead and check under, we get OK. What about over? Works, OK. What about controller? Yep, 403. And under, we get 17. OK. And uh, that is a, pretty much it uh, for the feature. You basically, let's take a look at this again. We go to the service. Your authorization attribute, which captures this uh, dynamic data or at uh, point definition. So wherever you want to use it, you want to kind of like adjust or configure it how it's going to behave. You combine the attribute and the requirement together, plus you have to add this I authorization requirement data interface, and you just implement it like this. You don't need to register a policy for this. The policy will be constructed automatically. Uh, you may want to perhaps add some kind of a custom extension method. So it would just require this parameter rather than, you know, having to specify over and over, but you know, that's something that you can do yourself. But that's pretty much it. Basically making up a dynamic policies or configurable policies is a lot easier in .NET 8. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. As always, if you would like the source code for this video, as well as all of my previous videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will greatly appreciate it. And a big and special thank you goes out to all of my Patreon supporters. You helped me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.